Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sandra. A couple of weeks ago in my Broken Empire video toward the end of that, I mentioned that there were a lot of story elements in Mark Lawrence's Broken Empire trilogy that reminded me of another book, uh, a book that's one of my favorites. I came to it almost 15 years ago now. I did not have to read this in high school or college, I just came to it on my own sometime after college during just the personal dark period of my life, a quarter life crisis if you will. This is a classic book that was written almost 300 years ago. Because Candide is a classic book, you can easily get your hands on it for free. I know the Kindle store has it, the Apple Books app, you can download it for free. I'm sure the Barnes & Noble Nook has something similar, so you can easily get your hands on it. It is a novella, it's less than 200 pages, so it's a quick read. If you are a fan of the fantasy genre, I would definitely recommend you give this book a read just because there are a lot of grimdark elements I feel like in this particular story. It touches on everything from incest to rape to slavery to natural disasters. There's a lot of like violent and bad horrible things going on in this particular story. I think it's because of those elements that's why I was reminded of Broken Empire because you know, in Prince of Thorns, there's just so many, it's like a train wreck of just really terrible things happening to different people constantly. And I think that's what made me think of this story. But before I give, <clears throat> excuse me, before I give a non-spoilery general recap of this book, I think it's worth talking about who Voltaire was so that you know where he's coming from and you understand how extreme he seemed for his time. Voltaire was born in the late 1600s in Paris, France. His dad actually wanted him to become a lawyer, but he, Voltaire, really loved writing and philosophy and writing plays and poetry. That's what interested in him. He, had, he kept a very close pulse on the current events of that time, whether it was things in the French family or you know, the Roman Catholic Church. He just was really interested in all of it. Voltaire was actually a pen name of his. I believe he had written something very, very critical about the French royal family and accusing them of incest that landed him in jail for almost a year. And so after that, he did take on this, this pen name of Voltaire. And you can do some research on your own, but there are different theories on how he came up with Voltaire. Some saying that it was kind of like a Latin derivative of his actual surname just flipped around as an anagram. It's just, I love little theories like that, so I thought it was really cool. Yeah, he was very forward-thinking for his time. He was very, very critical of the Roman Catholic Church. He had very strong opinions on slavery. He had a very progressive attitude towards monarchies in general. Um, he was probably like a, a like an early advocate of this, you know, idea of democracy and people being able to govern themselves. He's just a really interesting guy. So when you read Candide from that perspective of knowing Voltaire's personal opinions on things like that, it kind of brings out new meaning. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion, separation of church and state. He also very vocally rejected ideas of optimism, basically this idea that everything shitty that happens to you in life is the best thing that can possibly happen. Like he hated that. This book is kind of the rejection embodied. Interesting, interesting read. This is from the back cover of the book that I bought. Are evil and tragedy part of a cosmic plan that mere humans are blind to? Should we just accept our fates with the belief that everything happens for a good reason? That we live in, quote, the best of all possible worlds? One of the finest satires ever written, Voltaire's Candide savagely skewers this very optimistic approach to life as a shamefully inadequate response to human suffering. The swift and lively tale follows the absurdly melodramatic adventures of the youthful Candide who is forced into the army, flogged, shipwrecked, betrayed, robbed, separated from his beloved, and tortured by the Inquisition. 
As Candide witnesses calamity upon calamity, he begins to discover that all is not always for the best. It is filled with wit, intelligence, and an abundance of dark humor. Like, this book has everything. So if you are a fan of grimdark or fantasy in general, even though this is not a fantasy book, there are a number of elements and parallels that I think that you would find in this and be able to enjoy the story and just stew about it. Yeah, so it follows a guy named Candide. He has this tutor named Pangloss, who is the personification, I guess, of optimism. He, no matter what shitty thing, like what horrible thing happens to Pangloss throughout this book, he just maintains this positive attitude about it and it's so ridiculous, but very entertaining at the same time. It starts off, in this Baron's castle. Candide is living there. Pangloss is his tutor. Candide falls in love with the Baron's daughter and is caught kissing her by the Baron, so he gets kicked out. From there, he travels all around the world with all this crazy shit that keeps happening to him. So from natural disasters to slavery to being in the military, there's just so many horrible things that happen to him. And this particular book, that I have. It does include like some fun illustrations um, in it. They're so cartoon like, like caricature almost, but it's such, it's such a gem. It's a quick read, an easy read. It's divided into chapters that have kind of quick summaries about what they're about. So chapter one, how Candide was brought up in a magnificent castle and how he was driven out of it. Chapter two, what happened to get Candide among the Bulgarians? Chapter three, how Candide escaped from the Bulgarians and what happened to him afterwards? How Candide found his old master Pangloss again and what happened to them? A tempest, a shipwreck, an earthquake. What else happened to Dr. Pangloss, Candide, and James the Anabaptist? It's just, it takes them everywhere. And by the end of it, so much has happened to these people. Some are dead, some are alive. They're all just beaten down and reject this idea of optimism and that they're living in the best of all possible possible worlds and everything that's happened to them is, you know, for the best. Like, they completely just look at it as a crock of shit. The main message is rather than chasing after this ephemeral idea of happiness and looking at things from that lens. If you want to be happy, you're gonna have to just plant some roots and work for it. And I think that's an incredible message, especially in today's kind of, I don't know, I feel like we have a cancel culture and I feel like we have a very drive-through, instant gratification kind of culture as well. It's just kind of the society that we have today, and I think this is a great book. Just to give you an example of the reading, just kind of the tone and pacing and the point of view of it, here is a little excerpt from chapter 21. Candide and Martin draw near to the coast of France. They reason with each other. They could finally see the coast of France when Candide said to Martin, Mr. Martin, were you ever in France? Yes, sir, said Martin. I have been in several provinces of that kingdom. In some half of the people are fools and madmen. In some they are too sly. In still others they are in general either very good-natured or very brutal, while in others they affect to be witty, and in all their ruling passion is love. The next is slander, and the last is to talk nonsense. But, Mr. Martin, were you ever in Paris? Yes, sir, I have been in that city, and it is a place that contains all species just as described. It is a chaos, a confused multitude where every one seeks pleasure without being able to find it, at least as far as I have observed during my short stay in that city. At my arrival, I was robbed of everything I had by pickpockets at the fair of Saint Germain. I myself was taken for a robber and confined in prison a whole week after which I took a job as a proofreader in order to get enough money to return on foot to Holland. It's just, it's that kind of crazy story and the things that happen to them are, are so outrageous that it, you can't stop watching all of these scenes unfold. It's very witty, it's an intelligent read, it's fast paced. There's a lot of things happening. I wouldn't say that it's particularly character driven. It's certainly plot driven, but I don't think that tarnishes the message of the book overall. I hope that was not spoilery at all. I didn't really touch on any of the major 
plot points because I didn't want to ruin anything happening, but it's a fun ride. Candide by Voltaire. Do yourself a favor, give it a read, and then let me know what you think. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and share it. Um, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. All right, thanks guys. Until next week, bye.